Hey everybody, welcome to WP Easy Cart. Uh, today's video tutorial we're going to walk through how to use the option sets, the variants, the modifiers on your products, and how you can really get those creative um, additional options that you're looking for, and how to, can you get them to change price. And uh, this is a kind of a follow up new video. We've had a lot of option sets in Easy Cart, but we have modified them recently. And so this uh, video is going to align with our new option set system. And so let's just jump right in here. Let's take a look at the uh, store that I have online. Uh, this is just a demo store. You can see these are demo products. And when we talk about option sets, just so we all uh, are on the same page here, you've got a product um, and when you want an option set, it gives your users a choice, whether it be size, maybe it's color, uh, you want to have the ability for the for them to customize the product and so this is very very popular to do and so we've actually uh, remodeled our entire option set system in easy cart and the reason is they align now with square um, and so you can use the square payment system because they have products and options and variants and modifiers uh, and it aligns right with easy cart but if you don't use Square, maybe you use PayPal or you use Stripe or you use Authorize.net, uh, the option sets work just as well um, in EasyCart by themselves. So that's why we have them and so we're going to take a look here. Uh, you can see this one is a combo box, just a pull down. Uh, if I jump back over to my products, let's take a look at another one. Uh, you can have um, color swatches. Uh, in this case, uh, it's not a combo box. You can have little swatches. We have a lot of other option sets uh, and modifiers, things like text boxes, text areas, check boxes, um, radio groups. We have file uploads. Uh, you can really create some nice looking forms and collect a lot of data um, using our option sets. And our option sets also allow you to change pricing too, and that's really popular. Um, maybe you have a size or something and you want to have it increase the price, uh, it'll do that. So let's let's dive in and take a look at, at how to do this. Now, uh, here are our products. You can see I'm in my products. I've just got some demos. And we also have a menu over here for option sets. Okay, And so there's a couple ways to do uh, to set these up and I'll show you the first way. Let's just take a look at this first um, fall coat for example. Uh, when you're editing a product of course you can do the images and all the product descriptions and if you scroll down you'll notice you get right into the option sets. Now we've changed the language a little bit here and so it's it, it takes a second to kind of understand what they do. Uh, we've got basic option sets here and these are going to make product variants, okay, or product variations, and they're a little bit different than uh, advanced product modifiers. And so you might say, well, what's the difference? Um, option sets or these variations, these come off uh, as having their own SKU. Uh, they can also have their own base price. So. You'll notice up here we have uh, the price of this item is $169. So as you add these uh, variations, we can actually customize them um, to uh, the the item, okay, uh, with their own SKU and with their own um, uh, pricing. Modifiers, just think of them as not adjusting inventory or having their own SKU but they just modify a product. Think of modifiers as your text boxes, your text areas, your check boxes, uh, file uploads. You can have conditional logic to them. You can have, um, you can also have price changing with these uh, modifiers as well. So here you can do two things with option sets. You can create variations or you can create modifiers. So let's take a look at what the difference here might look like. Uh, for example, I've got a basic um, uh, size here. I'm going to go ahead and just add uh, a size to it. Okay, and you can see. Um, well, let me get rid of one of them here. I'm going to remove the first one. 
okay the minute I add product options you're going to have this section once you add them so you go create new option set and this is where you can select either a combo or swatches okay and as you do that you can say I want um, size and you can walk through setting up your option set and as you do that you'll also set up all your different individual items okay and that's all we've done here and then what you do is you add that option set to your product so you add and you pick which option set that you created to it and now you attach it to your product and what this does is it creates variations so even though I'm working with this product I can now have all these variations and I can give them their own individual SKU and I can give them their, their own individual price as well and I can also track their stock quantity okay now <clears throat> let's take a look at this let's go ahead and give them all their own SKU and I might want to have maybe some numbers or something unique identifying them however you give individual SKUs for your variations we'll do that here okay so I could also give them individual prices so for example um, let's say they're all 169 here okay I could come in here and I could say oh I want this extra large to be an extra 200 okay and so this is really getting highly configurable in terms of uh, what you do with your variations Okay. These also track uh, stock and you'll see here that tracking items disabled at this point and you might say well how do I turn that on? So if you come down here to quantity this is where you enable your overall tracking of quantity. Okay. So if I take a look at this product, let's, let me jump back to my store so you can see what it looks like on the front end. This is my fall coat. You can see right now I have 25 of these in stock. Okay. It doesn't matter what size the user picks, it just says I have 25 in stock because I'm just tracking overall quantity and I put it right here. If I want to, I can switch to tracking variation quantities and when I do that, you'll see that disappears now, but my stock quantity appears on my variations and this is where I can go through and I can say I've got three of these, five of these, four of these, seven of these, nine of these, okay and if I come back and refresh this fall coat you can see it says I have 28 of them and as I pick individual variations it switches not only the model number but it also switches the overall stock. Okay, so that is the key difference with uh, variations. Okay, they're, they're somewhat limited. You have to use a combo box or a swatch because we can't put inventory on things like file uploads and text boxes. Okay, those are, those are modifiers. So that's what your, your difference between your basic options and your advanced modifiers is. So let's take a look now at a advanced product modifier. Okay, and it says right here product modifiers they cannot adjust inventory, but they do modify the product with things like text boxes, combo boxes, things like that. So let's say we have a product like this um, and it's got a basic size, but maybe I want to ask the user a question like I'm, I'm doing a registration form and I want the person's first and last name okay I know it doesn't make sense on a piece of clothing but let's just say we want to collect something like that I can create a modifier and you'll notice now under modifiers I have a whole lot more choices I've got things like combos swatches text inputs uh, I've got number lines file uploads you get the idea date inputs even dimensional units uh, if you have a product that uh, that uses dimensional units it's kinda cool so I'm going to do a text input and I'm just going to do um, user's name okay and that's just for your internal use um, and then it says what should the label be so what's the what's the prompt for the user uh, please enter your name 
And is it required? Sure. I'm going to make this required. So if the user tries to add it to the cart, they'll get this prompt. And I'm going to create this modifier. Okay, and you can see now I have a modifier called username. Uh, conditional logic is turned off. It's a text field and it is required. And if any time I want to come over here, I can actually edit this. And it's going to take you to our advanced option editor, which is over here on the left. Okay, and I'll show you that in a second. <clears throat> but I want to stay back here on the product. So this is our modifier. It's added to the product. Let's just come back over here and let's refresh what our product looks like. And you can see now we have a text input field for the user. It says, please enter your name. If the user tries to add this to the cart, it'll say enter your name because that's what we put in for the prompt. Okay, so this makes a great way for you to collect information is using product modifiers on here. Okay, now we could also um, add conditional logic to this and we're going to do a separate video on conditional logic because it gets a little bit more complicated um, but we have all of that built into our system uh, whether or not you want to show or hide some of these modifiers okay now we talked about price changes um, we can change the variance up here with price changing it's really simple uh, but let's take a look at our modifiers and our options in a little bit more detail so you can see they're attached here to this product that was super easy and every time we create them it has this little sidebar that slides out uh, we have an advanced editor for options over here on our menu so these become reusable components so maybe you've got 50 shoes and you want to have you know shoe size you don't want to have to recreate that 50 times so what we do is we put them over here in this option set configurator and you can now attach them to multiple products as you create makes it really simple and so you can see here that there's the the modifier it's an advanced text input field the basic ones again can control inventory uh, the advanced ones do not uh, but we can do a lot of things here uh, with these so I can edit the uh, actual option if I click on it I can come in here and I can choose which type this is going to be okay uh, is it going to be a basic or is it going to be an advanced option okay I can also come in here and I can edit the option items by either clicking this button or coming over here and clicking on this icon and so this, this lets you edit the individual pieces inside of an option set. So maybe I no longer want yellow. I can come in here and I can delete yellow and it will take it out. Okay. And I can open these. And this is where I can actually do some other uh, configuration things such as uploading and deleting the image swatch. Um, I can change the sort order. I can come in here and do my price adjustment adjustments or weight adjustments. Um, again, these are on the very basic options that I'm working with. So let's jump back here to option sets and take a look at a advanced one. So let's let's say I'm going to add an option this way. I'm going to create something and let's just create an advanced combo box and let's say um, this is uh, the uh, pant size. And is it required? Sure, we'll make it required. Okay, and once you create the option, then you can come into the option items, and this is where you'll create new actual option items underneath it. So maybe I'll have small, and this will be the first item in the list. And this is an advanced option, so you have a lot of configuration changes here that you can do. Um, you can have it, for example, change the extension to a model number. Um, it'll add something to it. You can choose whether or not you want it initially selected. Um, you can even have some of these allow for downloads. So maybe you want to have um, an option that says ship to me or download my PDF book 
you can have that option set distinguish what to do. Um, you can have it uh, remove shipping. You can also have this change price. Now, this is probably the most uh, common place people want to do. They might want to have a basic price adjustment of, let's say, $20. And what that means is this will add $20 to the price if the user selects this option. Um, you can do uh, product multipliers. You can do a price override. So, for example, our item was $169. I could override that, and I could say it's now $149 if the user selects this choice. So uh, there's a lot of configuration here as, long, as well as one-time price adjustments. We can also change the weights. So if you really have an item that really like packages differently and you want to change the basic weight, maybe it adds five pounds to the shipping, you can do that um, with our advanced modifiers. Okay, so advanced modifiers look like this, much different than uh, um, the uh, the basic um, options. You'll get more option choices if you come in and create um, the modifiers. So that's how they work. Um, you can see this is the actual option builder if you really want to go in and actually build option sets. Uh, but you can do it through the products as well. Again, if you just open up a product, you'll see the uh, the basic products right here that can adjust inventory and then you have your modifiers and modifiers can adjust the uh, a lot more they can have uh, conditional logic on them they just can't adjust inventory okay and you'll notice uh, under these uh, product options these variants let's say we're gonna come in here and add another one um, let's say we're gonna add shirt color okay now every color and every size has to have a quantity so you can see you got quite a list of variations here okay so every time you add them it's going to multiply those and you should be aware of that because now you've got every combination of every basic option and so if you're going to track individual quantities on variations and again that takes place down here in your quantity box then just be aware that's what it's doing here. Okay, and we give you actually an easy way to do this. You can export these to a, an Excel file. You can fill them down real quick and you can import them and uh, it'll fill these in for you as well if you don't want to. We also made it pretty quick so you can just tab between these. Okay, so if you want to work quickly and just tab through them like a spreadsheet, you can. Okay and then of course your modifiers. So that's basic options, that's how they work. That's our variants and our modifiers. If you work with the Square Payment and Gateway system, uh, you're gonna see that they, you can actually import uh, your products and they will line up exactly right here with what you have in Square. So, so um, I'm gonna do another video on conditional logic and I'm also gonna do another video on more advanced price changing so if you're still kind of a little fuzzy on our option sets you might take a look at our resources on our website and you can see those other videos as we go through there thanks for watching